Hello, what's up everybody? Thank you for checking me out. This is Seko Simpson. If this is your first time of checking out my YouTube videos, kindly subscribe to my channel. I have these couple of um, headlines that I would like to read talking about accommodation in Ghana. But before I read these, let me tell you that Ghana do not have excess resources to waste. Ghana needs a lot of resources to use. And because of that, because we don't have it in abundance, we we manage. If you ask anybody from Ghana, hey, how are you? How are things going? Shall I'm managing or I'm managing. Everybody says I'm managing. Why? Because we don't have a lot of resources and therefore the little that we have here in Ghana that is accessible to us, we try to manage it. Let me give you an instance. I had a friend visit me from Scotland and she stayed with me for a while and in the house my daddy's house that is where we were staying you know we had some few rooms so she had one i had one and everybody was you know happy and then that one morning she got up and then she was going to brush her teeth and then she opened the tap uh, fetched the water with the with the brush and then started brushing and then i could hear the water running so i went to her and i realized that i stood there for like a minute I realized that the water was still running while she was brushing it. I was like, hey, stop it. No, that's not how we do things here. Maybe out there in the West, due to the resources, due to the system, things run like 24-7. Yes, unlike here, I know most of you who have visited Ghana will be like, today there's light out, tomorrow there's light out, the next day there's light out. Yes, we don't have all these resources in abundance so therefore we try to manage it i remember it got to a time we were even having load shedding where if if this area would get light today that the same day this area wouldn't get light today and it and it's run like you know a shift and because of that people were really mindful as to the kind of uh you know uh things that they do with either electricity with water and otherwise so now let me read some headlines. When I typed on YouTube accommodation in Ghana, I could see top eight recommended cheap Airbnb shortlist apartment in Accra. I can read where to stay in Ghana for any budget. Best affordable, fully furnished apartment in Accra. Living in Ghana, she owns 10 apartments in Accra. Tor, look at my 46 Airbnb, okay. Um, someone says Ghana's new $80,000 luxury apartment. $80,000. Do you know how much that is? Okay. Uh, I found very cheap rental properties in Greater Accra. Uh, what can $30 get you in Accra? So all these that I see, okay, I see uh, Tayo Aina from Nigeria saying this $190,000 luxury apartment in Accra will blow your mind. Okay beautiful everybody is trying to project a certain apartment in ghana a certain amount of uh, money that you will need to get this luxurious apartment now nobody is talking about what are the processes what does one go through to get an apartment here in ghana and what are you supposed to expect from the landlord or the landlady but let's come to the normal kind of lifestyle now, first of all, culture-wise, cultural differences, somebody in the USA, in the UK, in the Canada, would come here and then see an apartment that I, I assume to be the best apartment to be, for them to be something like this apartment. I remember I took someone to a hotel and then she was like, is, is this a hotel? This is like an apartment for somebody who doesn't have a place to stay in the, in the UK. I was like, really? But to us, this is like superb. You understand? So now let's look at those of you coming to stay in the motherland. And then you don't want to go through this luxurious kind of, you know, apartment looking. But you want to look at the, the general, the normal one. Now, here in Ghana, if you want an apartment in certain places, I'm not referring to people who have already traveled and they've had the experience of building luxurious houses. But we are looking at a general building or general housing here in Ghana. Mostly, our buildings come in compound houses. When I say in compound houses, 
I don't know how you call it, but put it up as a comment and let me know. But here in compound houses, we have a big yard where we have this building with about five to ten rooms. Five to ten rooms in that in that house. And usually it's not like um, a store building. Yeah, we have that of the store building, but these are all like short, short buildings put together. Okay. Now, these apartments usually have one or two meters. So you can have three people, four people sharing one meter. When I say meter, that meter that reads electricity or water. That means that at the end of the day, the three or the four of you must share the bill or the cost on that meter. So assuming that you get in there and there's a compound house, and I know most of you wouldn't love to stay in a compound house because of the cultural differences. Everybody has his own apartment. But that is the difference that you have to notice when you're coming to Ghana. Most places are in compound houses. It is recently, like five, four, six, seven years ago, that those people who happen to travel outside Ghana get to learn that, okay, there is this kind of building that I can put up and give it to just one person. Okay, so here you go to most houses and they live in compound houses. And at the end of the day, sharing of the bill becomes a problem. So if you're from outside, you're from the West, and you don't know about this, you get to Ghana and say, why am I supposed to share a bill with someone? Yes, you have to do it because you're living in a compound house. And that is the difficulty some of us like me would face when brothers and sisters from the diaspora asked me to look for an apartment for them. Cape Coast wasn't, isn't really known for, you know, um, single houses. It is recently, like I stated, most of them want to build a house and give it out for rent with the local mindset that we understand that if you want to live in a house, you, you're going to live in a compound house with a lot of people, share water, share electricity, and even sometimes share washroom. Yes, most of the compound houses, you do share washrooms. So if you're not privy to some of these things, you will get to Ghana and it will be difficult for you to find a whole apartment just by yourself. If you are ready, then if there are two or three rooms in that apartment or in that compound house, you need to pay for all the three rooms so that you can be there by yourself. I am bringing you this because when you come to Ghana, things are way different, way, way different. And we are now picking it. If you understand the fact that Ghanaians are now picking the idea of inculcating, welcoming uh, um, brothers and sisters from the diaspora, then you would understand and live with us. Some of us like me may understand your predicament, your, 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 your opinion, your kind of lifestyle, even though I may not 100% understand you, but at least because I deal with most of you, I understand. Now, the other thing is that here in Ghana, when you go for a rental or an accommodation, the landlord will not write you, um, is it a legal paper or a tenancy agreement? No, they don't. Because most of these people were or are a little bit illiterate. They suffered to get they are building whatever they have now so they don't have time if you want to come and stay come and stay they don't have time to go and print okay i've given this apartment to so so and so for this number of days or this number of months this number of weeks and um, it doesn't include electricity bill at the end of the month it doesn't include water it doesn't include gas it doesn't include this it doesn't include that they don't have time for that so all they will tell you is okay looking at the month you came you came on 30th of May 2022. So if you are renting the place for one year, then 30th or 31st of May 2023, you need to leave. That is it. So if you come and then you feel like you may have an issue later on, the best thing for you to do is to ask. Maybe if they don't have it, they could just ask their children to say, okay, this person wants us differently. So let's draft a tenancy agreement for that person to, to sign so that we all agree that this and this is what is going to happen. That is what I'm saying that when you come to Ghana, try as much as possible to just a little bit be open-minded with certain things. If you think you're not okay with it, ask for clarification rather than to allow yourself to stay in and at the end of the day, we have issues. So first of all, 
I am saying that when you come to Ghana, barely are you going to have an apartment for yourself. You would have it. That is why I said pair the education, pair the travel experiences from other people. They realize that they can put up, you know, these luxurious places in Accra, maybe somewhere in Kumasi, in Tamale, in Cape Coast. But mostly, when you come to Ghana and you're looking for apartment, remember that you will share electricity, you will share water, you, you may share bathroom and the toilet. If you're okay with it, you move on. If you're not okay with it, then you need to keep roaming, roaming around. And those places, because they have realized that this kind of real estate thing is booming, they may give you a certain price that will, you know, beat your imagination because you feel like, okay, I learned Ghana is like a developing economy, so things wouldn't be that expensive. Things would be like a little bit, you know, cheap and all that. It is cheap. It is cheap. Pay your understanding of cheap, you may have it cheap. But pay your understanding of cheap, you may have it cheap. I hope you understand what I'm saying. This is just a short video to let you know that when you're coming to Ghana and you need an accommodation, apart from the brothers and sisters from Africa who are projecting luxurious houses, that is beautiful. But when it comes to the average, the locals, people like us, the average people where we have one room or two rooms with our wife and kids and maybe a house help or whatever, you may not have things easy as you have it in there. So you may share water if you're okay with it. And that is another thing. It comes with its own challenges. So let's say in a compound house, we have three, four people living there, sharing one electricity bill, sharing one water bill. Now, when the bill comes, how do we share it? Do we share it equally or some will take more, will pay more money than the others? Now, this is how it works. So all the tenants will meet together and disclose their, their gadgets. Okay, I have um, a home theater. I have a ceiling fan, one in, my, one in the bedroom, one in the hall. I have um, a TV. I have a refrigerator. I have a microwave. I have another standing fan. I have a laptop. I have a desktop computer. So you have eight. We call these points. So you have eight points. So with this eight points, when the light bill comes, we put all the points together and divide it. So assuming I have eight points, my co-tenant has um, three points because he's a busy man. He only has a TV, a laptop, and a, and a fridge. Okay. The other tenant is a student. He only has um, a refrigerator and a laptop. So we have three points, two points, and my eight points. So when the electricity bill comes or the water bill comes, we share, I mean, we're looking at the water, the electricity bill. We share according to the points. So eight plus two plus three, 10, 13, 13 points. And I would take a unit divide, uh, multiplied by my point, then I'll pay that money. But sometimes, People may hide what they have. Sometimes people may hide what they have and the bill will come and it will be so huge that you'll be like, hey, I don't know what is going on. I just have a TV. I don't even use it. I don't have time. I don't stay in the house. I even don't have this. But every day when the, 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 we get uh, um, electricity bill, I have to pay that. I have to pay that. And these are some of the issues that comes with it. Now, Ghana has moved basically uh, let's say we can say 50% of postpaid to prepaid. So now you can buy your electricity uh, power maybe ahead of time. You can buy, let's say, 20 CDs, 30 CDs. In my house, I have, let me, let me use my house for example. I buy 30 CDs and it will last me for, let's say, three weeks. Let's say a month. Yes. Now, how, how do I do it? I have one refrigerator one tv and a washing machine that is it and even the tv it is the kids who watch the tv and it's not like let's say it's not all the time yes and with the washing machine we only use it i think twice or once in a week so i would even say it is the washing machine that drains the electricity power and then the refrigerator this is how i choose to use it i switch it on 
in the in the in the evening around five o'clock p.m and leave it on it freezes everything then the next morning around six o'clock seven o'clock i put it off because at that moment we, we we normally go into the refrigerator we take stuff put stuff in take stuff and i learned the more you open and, and close i learned it it takes a lot of power so by that time when the fridge is off i can easily go in come out going and the kids you know i want to drink water they go open i want to drink water so this makes me save a little um, uh, um, power in my house but you would have somebody who leaves the refrigerator on 24 7 who leaves the tv on 24 7 if he has an ac they leave it on for 24 7 and at the end of the day they come and they complain that the electricity power is this is that that is why i said in ghana we don't have things in abundance we manage things we manage it so when you come into ghana looking for an accommodation these are a few tips i think you should have in mind when you're coming so that it will help you have a beautiful stay here in ghana thank you very much for checking my video out. i want you to put up a comment explain to me how things are in your country how are things really done when it comes to getting an apartment peace